In exercise 5-8, we're going to compute the margin of safety. There's a couple steps that you want to do when you're looking to do this type of computation. The first thing we want to do is prepare a contribution margin income statement at our current sales volume. And in this particular problem, we're at 1,000 units per month. Then we'll want to prepare a contribution margin at the break-even point. The idea behind the margin of safety is to evaluate the um, difference between your current sales volume and your break-even sales volume. What it indicates to you is the dollar amount in sales that can drop before you start losing money. So step one says prepare a contribution margin income statement. So that's what we're going to do. And this is what I've got highlighted up above. From the standpoint of the sales, they've given us $30 per unit and that the variable expenses are 20. We will make $10 per unit contribution margin. The fixed expenses, remember, is a total dollar amount for the month. So I've put that in the column next to the per unit information. Okay. The other information that you see there is obviously I took the 1,000 units per month and I multiplied them out times the number of the selling price and also the variable cost, subtracted the two to get my contribution margin, calculated my profit at 1,000 units. The next step is that I want to compute my break-even. The easiest way is to work your way backwards. Break-even means that you're going to make zero profit. You have to make enough to cover your fixed expenses, so contribution margin has to be at least equivalent to the fixed expenses so that when you subtract those two, you would end up with um, break-even point, zero profit. All right, so then what do we know? We know that if we take this um, $7,500 and if I were to divide it by the contribution margin per unit, $10 per unit, it would tell me how many units to break even. When I do that computation, I get 750 units. All right, so I take that 750, and if it's 750 units to break even, we sell each unit at $30 a piece. If I sell them at $30 a piece, I would take and multiply 750 times 30, it comes out to 22,500. Remember that I need to subtract my cost as well. So this time my cost is $20 is the variable cost. So again, looking to see what my computation equals, I would take 750 units times $20, $15,000. All right. Once I do that, I do the subtraction, sales minus my variable cost gives me a contribution margin of $7,500. Subtract my fixed expenses for the month, I end up with zero profit. So coming back over to um, requirement number one, compute the company's margin of safety. The margin of safety by definition is the difference in the dollar sales volume. We are at current sales of 30,000. Our break-even sales, we just computed 22,500. My margin of safety in dollars is the difference, $7,500. Okay. So basically, 70, um, sales can fall $7,500 before we start losing money. Part two of this problem basically asks you a similar question in the format of what is my margin of safety as a percent? So I use the same data, and I can retype it, but I would actually probably just start with the 7,500 since I've already got that computation. And I'm going to take that dollar amount, and I'm going to divide it by my current sales. My current sales are 30,000. Okay. I think I hit the wrong key there. Um, I meant to hit the parentheses. Sorry about that. Okay, so what does that come out to? Well, I've got $7,500 divided by 30, no commas when you're doing Excel. Okay, and then I convert it to a percentage, 25%. So if I think about it, I have 
um, 1,000, uh, sorry, 1,000 units at current levels. If sales fall 25% or subtract out 250 units down to 750, okay, I subtracted 250 units or 25%, then I would end up at the break-even point, 750 units times my sales. I would break even. I s lose more than one more unit in sales and I'm starting to lose money. That's what the margin of safety is about. The second question is asking me about the degree of operating leverage. So the degree of operating leverage just a little bit different. What we're doing in this particular problem is um, we're going to use the formula to compute um, what a change in sales will have, how it will impact my profit. So the first thing that you want to do is use one of the formulas to compute degree of operating leverage. And what that is is actually a look at what percentage fixed cost you have versus your variable cost. The uh, formula for the degree of operating leverage is actually to take your contribution margin and to divide it by your net operating income. Okay. There are a couple ways to compute this. Another alternative way with the same ending result is to take your fixed expenses divided by net operating income and then once you have that division and if you add one you will end up with the same answer the third way to arrive at the degree of operating leverage is to take the reciprocal of the margin of safety okay percent what is the reciprocal mean reciprocal if you remember is one over some number, so that number is going to be your margin of safety percent. Okay, so we would have to figure out what break even point is in this particular example to find out what the margin of safety percent is. Well, we can do that, but first let's kind of work on this um, following the formulas. Okay, I probably should have labeled them A, B, C, um, but we're going to do that um, in a little bit. So let's use the first technique. And I'll just write down A over here. Okay, so I'm going to take CM, contribution margin, and I'm going to divide it by net operating income. If I use that format, I got 48,000, and I'm going to divide it by 10,000. I hope you can see that that's going to end up being 4.8. If I use technique B, it was going to be take my fixed cost or expenses, divide by net operating income. And after I do that, add 1 to it. Okay and to see if we come out with the same answer. So try again. Look, 38,000 divided by 10,000 equals 3.8. Add 1, and the answer is 4.8, same as the one above. Now, in order for me to use technique C, which is the reciprocal of margin of safety, okay, I would have to calculate what my margin of safety is. Um, in this particular problem, in order to do that, okay, I'm going to follow the same step I did previously. I'm going to calculate my contribution margin, take my fixed costs, and then calculate net operating income at the break-even point. Okay, I need to know that first. So keep in mind that um, at the break-even point, my net operating income is going to be zero. In this case, I'm going to put my 38000 as my fixed cost. Essentially, what that's telling me is that I need to generate 38000 of contribution margin in order for my profit to be zero. Now, in this case, they didn't tell us what my per unit um, contribution margin is, but they did give us that the contribution margin percent was 60%. So if the contribution margin percent is 60%, I can just take 38,000 divided by 60 to come up with my sales. 
So let me do that up here, divide by 0 0.60, okay? And my sales at the break-even point, okay, and let me get rid of the extra decimal places, okay? And let me convert all these to dollar formats, currency, zero decimals. All right, to just check myself, okay, what this is telling me is I want to be below 80,000 because at 80,000 I'm already making a profit. The variable cost percentage that was given to us at 40% of our sales number. So let me see if the mathematically this works. So this number times 0 0.40 is 25,333. And if you look mathematically, it does come out, okay? because this is 40%, sales is 100%. Okay, if I subtract the 100 minus 40, I get 60. So all of this worked out. All right, so at this point, what we just figured out, okay, is um, my break-even point, and I wanna calculate my margin of safety. So let me do that over here for this particular example. I'm gonna abbreviate margin of safety. All right, so again, we're going to take 80,000 in sales dollars, our current sales level. We're going to subtract our break-even sales level. To get margin of safety as a percent, I will need to divide by 80,000. Okay, so let me put all that data together, and then we'll come up with what that actually equals. Okay, so 80,000 minus 63,333. All right, now I'm just going to hit, comes out to 16,667. But that's not my percent yet. I'm going to have to divide by 80,000. Comes out to 20.8% if I round it. Okay, so let me see if our trick over here with the reciprocal works. 1 divided by 20.8%. Okay, and we're going to have to see if that comes out to our 4.8. So here, 1 divided by, and again, this is going to be a rounded number, but it should come out to 4.8. So three different methods. Whoops, I went the wrong way. I did not mean to do that. I wanted to lose all my decimal places to decrease them so that I'm consistent. So you see 4.8, 4.8. 4.8, three different ways to calculate that degree of operating leverage, okay? So now, the purpose of the degree of operating leverage is basically to tell you the impact of a change in sales. If sales were to increase, okay, 5%, they want to know what is the impact on net operating income. So the DOL, degree of operating leverage, is actually a multiplier. What happens is, is that change in sales will result in a change in profit by, as, you know, from the standpoint of the dollar amount, by taking the percent change times the, um, degree of operating leverage. So for instance, in this particular problem, okay, we have a degree of operating leverage of 4.8, and we multiply it by 5% increase in sales. The prediction is that we will have an increase in operating income, NOI, of 4.8 times 5, okay, 0.05 or 5%, okay, so 4.8 times 5%, oops, sorry, this is, a f I did 5 as a whole number, like 5, so this is actually a 24, oops, wrong way, sorry, I should have put 0.05, and that would have probably come out 24%. So either way, 24%. Increase in profits. How do we know that? We can come back and verify that. 
Um, I'm going to insert a couple extra columns here so I can.